Hanyang, in this video we will see how to perform longhand addition and subtraction in hexadecimal. We will compare each of these to the more familiar decimal operations and see how they are similar. On the left side look at this decimal addition example. In the first column we see 4 plus 8. That produces 12, which is larger than the decimal base of 10. As a result, we carry over the base value 10 to the next column and leave the rest of the sum, 2, below the current column. We see a similar result when adding 1 plus 6 plus 7 to get 14. This procedure is exactly the same when adding in any base. The only difference is that a carryout brings the value of the base. So, in hexadecimal, that carry has a weight of 16. Look at this rightmost column, 8 plus b. In my brain, trained in decimal, I think of this as 8 plus 11, which equals 19. 19 is bigger than the base of 16, so I carry out a 16 to the next column, indicated by this 1. After carrying 16 out from 19, I am left with 3, which becomes part of the final sum. The next column reads, in decimal, as 1 plus 12 plus 7. This gives 20. 20 equals 16 plus 4. So ultimately, I write 4 as the sum and a carry of 16. The last column is simply 1 plus 5 plus 2 equals 8. No carries necessary. The parallels with decimal operations continue in subtraction. On the top right, we see the same decimal subtraction example from a previous video. The key points are that a carry in brings a weight of the base, in this case 10. Also, if we carry out from a zero, it temporarily holds a negative one before carrying in a 10 to make it a nine. Let's explore this hexadecimal example in more detail. The first column is straightforward. C minus 3 just means 12 minus 3, which produces a 9. No carries here. The next column is more interesting. I need to carry in to this 8, which gives a 1 8. Do not read this as 18. We are not in decimal. Rather, this 1 8 in hexadecimal actually equals 24 in decimal. To allow that carry in, we need to carry out a 1 from this 0. So it temporarily holds a negative 1. Then we add 16 to it from the next column. Negative 1 plus 16 gives us F. And the result of that carrying out turns this 4 into a 3. Now the columns are all set up for direct subtraction. C minus 3 gives 9. In decimal, the next column reads 24 minus 10 equals 14. We write that 14 as E in hexadecimal. Next column is 15 minus 2 equals 13. And the final column is 3 minus nothing equals 3. This last slide is simply another example of addition and subtraction in hexadecimal. Underneath the main problem, I'll write the steps that go on in my head for each column to jump between hexadecimal and decimal. So this first addition column is b plus c in hexadecimal or 11 plus 12 in decimal. The resulting 23 needs to split into a sum of 7 with a carry of 16. Remember in hexadecimal this 1 represents a weight of 16. Next column is 1 plus 5 plus 10 or 16. This means a carry of 1 with a sum of 0. Next column is 1 plus 3 plus 7, which equals 11 in decimal, or b in hexadecimal. Finally, 4 plus 2 yields 6. Now for the subtraction. f minus c in hexadecimal is 15 minus 12 in decimal, so the difference is 3. For 5 minus 6, we need to carry, so 5 becomes 1 5, which means 21 in decimal. 21 minus 6 gives 15, and we write the 15 as an F. To make that carry happen, we borrowed a 1 from this 0. So it temporarily holds a negative 1 until we carry in 16 to it from the next column. 
negative 1 plus 16 leaves us with 15 up top. Then 15 minus 7 gives 8. Finally, the E had 1 carried out from it, leaving D. Then D minus D gives 0, and the subtraction is complete. These sorts of problems feel very strange to most people. It takes a while to adjust our brains from decimal mode. But with a little practice, you'll find that the algorithm is consistent and achievable.